Now, after taking a veiled jibe at Beijing for blocking and the blacklisting of the Pakistan-based terrorists on many occasions, India's External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar met with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi in New York on Thursday at the BRICS ministerial meeting. The two leaders came face to face for the foreign minister's meet, which was hosted by South Africa, and the meeting was also attended by the Russian foreign minister Sergei Lavrov. And in the BRICS meeting, the ministers exchanged their views on major global and regional issues and also on the intra-BRICS activities. The BRICS, remember, is of course the acronym coined to associate the five emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. The BRICS members are known for their significant influence on world affairs. Since 2009, the governments of BRICS nations have met annually at formal summits to boost ties within the bloc. Now, although Wang Yi and Jashankar did not hold any bilateral meeting on the sidelines of the summit, but they were seen sitting next to each other during the high-level meeting. Now, the meetings come as tensions between New Delhi and Beijing continue to simmer over their geopolitical rivalry. From border tensions to China's growing advances in the Indo-Pacific, the countries have in fact locked horns on several issues over the course of several last years. And ahead of the BRICS foreign minister's meeting, Indian Foreign Minister S. Jaishankar had taken a dig at China for blocking an American proposal to designate the lashkar e taiba terrorist Sajid Mir as a global terrorist. Now, he's said to be one of India's most wanted terrorists and is believed to be the main handler of the 2008 Mumbai terror attack. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what this meeting between the two foreign ministers, of course, means, we are being joined by Vyond's principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidan Sibyl, is joining us live on this broadcast. Now, Sidan, this, of course, is a very significant meeting between the foreign ministers of the two nations of S. J. Shankar with China's Wang Yi. What are we to read into this? Well, both the ministers were present uh, at uh, the BRICS foreign ministers meeting and we know that there was no structured meeting uh, when it comes to uh, the, uh, the ministers, the Indian and the Chinese ministers. In fact, uh, it is a busy, busy schedule for uh, the Indian external affairs minister. 50 meetings, he has already had over 20 bilateral meetings. He has taken part in other uh, groupings as well, uh, the meetings of other groupings, including, of course, the G4. Uh, but when it comes to the BRICS grouping, one thing we can say is the absence of a joint statement, which we saw both in the IPSA meeting and, of course, the G4 meeting. The G4 meeting also took place on Thursday, just hours after uh, the BRICS meeting. Now, what has been the key outcome of the BRICS meeting is a media statement by South Africa. South Africa is the next host of the grouping and will be hosting the summit next year. Uh, two or three things are key outcomes. First, of course, uh, the uh, media statement says that uh, China and Russia back uh, India, Brazil, South Africa in their aspirations uh, at the United Nations. Now, that is uh, just a, a, a kind of not full uh, explaining, perhaps, uh, or not putting in clear terms that uh, India, Brazil, and South Africa can be part of an expanded United Nations Security Council. We know that uh, China has been dragging its feet when it comes to backing New Delhi at the high table. Second, of course, on the Ukraine, there is mention of the Ukraine in uh, the statement, the media statement, but it uh, again does not give a, a, a common consensus position. It right. basically reiterates the national position of all countries. And thirdly, uh, uh, and perhaps the most important part, which has been part of the news cycle as well, is the expansion of the BRICS, something that all the ministers have backed. Absolutely. Now, looking in terms of the dynamics, in terms of the India-China equation of shape in the course of what has happened in the course of the last few years, especially in the wake of the border standoff that we've also had, the fact that the leaders between the two nations are meeting again, does it indicate a thaw between the India-China equation? Well, I don't see any kind of thaw when it comes to India-China relation coming because we know that when it comes to India-China relationship after Doklam and then, of course, the, now after Galwan incident, the relationship has clearly nosedived. There is almost no conversation happening at the leader's level. 
we saw at samarkand summit there was no meeting between the two sides not even a handshake uh, uh, picture uh, we saw even though both the leaders were present together in one of uh, the family photos and again in new york as well there is no meeting both the lead the ministers were sitting together in fact that picture shows there is a certain level of uncomfort uh, both sides not very uh, comfortable by each other's presence in the room but of course as part of uh, uh, the grouping both sides were present so it looks like when it comes to india china relationship a new normalcy has been established a normalcy where of course we know uh, that india is keen that the border is resolved but china is keen that there is more bilateral relationship but of course new delhi has made it clear that unless border issue is resolved there will be no uh, kind of expansion in the ties between the two countries absolutely indeed thank you very much indeed sidan sabil for joining us and getting us all those insights there Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.